On this episode, I'm halfway through a three-day backpacking trip in a remote canyon of the American Southwest. It's become clear that I am following in the footsteps of many who have come before, finding evidences of human occupation of these canyons dating back thousands of years. Up until now, the trip has been one of sublime beauty and relative ease. Expecting more of the same, I continue exploring up a canyon in the afternoon of the second day. Little did I know the challenges this place still had in store for me. It's been off and on today between clouds and rain and sun and now it's sun again. It's gorgeous. I continued on in this newfound sunshine, once in a while hearing distant rumbles of thunder. Something was happening in the high country, but I wasn't bothered by it for the time being. Whew, all right guys. I'm just trudging through the bottomland down here, and then up through the trees. There's definitely something up under that cliff. Wow, okay, so getting closer, still a ways away. But as I've gotten closer, I notice there's green paint around the top of it. Getting there doesn't look particularly straightforward. I'm gonna have to take a closer look at that. There's some really nice clear water down here. No wonder why it was a good spot to live. All right, I think I found the way up. So I'm gonna drop my backpack and grab the cameras and head up there. There's another structure over here. Okay, there's like a little entry point and then tucked up here is a small granary. It's really cool to see the door here, the sandstone slab that would have actually sealed this door here to keep pests, rodents, things like that out of your food or whatever you're storing in here. Definitely a T-shaped door here, which would be from the ancestral Pueblo people, undoubtedly. It's a pretty wild setup here. So, you know, you've got this kind of door frame that completely blocks any entry except through the door itself, because it's built right to the cliff edge. You look down, I mean, that's probably, probably a good 50 feet down to the bottom. And there's that spring down there. Gosh, that green paint is phenomenal. I don't know how they made this green paint. I don't know, I know copper oxidized is green, but I don't know if that's what this was or some plant material. Definitely been a lot of fires in here. And it's not big, it's maybe 10 feet back, eight feet wide max. It's just hard imagining living in here. You know, it's got to be one of the more unique and special sites I've visited out here. Sure, the green paint is, is really cool and unique, but I think there's just something about seeing like such a perfectly preserved structure, you know, that would have looked really not a whole lot different when people were living in this eight, nine hundred years ago. You know, to, to poke your head in the window and like just to look in there, you know, sometimes it's, 
it's kind of shocking to see how small these places are. You know, for us in our modern world, with kind of our modern, especially at least American ideas of, you know, personal space and how much room we, we need. And, and it's just like, I don't know, it just makes you think. It just makes you think about life and makes you think about your priorities. So maybe about 30 feet down the ledge, there's one more granary tucked in here. Huh, wow, perfectly preserved. I believe this is called Waddle and Dob. You can see how down here at the bottom, you know, they put these sticks, they kind of cemented them in, in like a soft mortar at the time and then that dried and hardened. What a day, I think I'm gonna Grab a little water down here at the spring and then uh, we got to put some miles behind us. All right, just got back to camp. It was a great day, but it was a big day. <laughs> I can tell I'm uh, a bit calorically deficient and so I need some calories. I am gonna scrounge up a little snack before I start cooking and get camp set up. So, yeah. If you guys are curious what's on the menu tonight, it's a very simple stir fry. We've got some uh, green pepper, zucchini, shallot for the veggies, chicken, um, instant rice, and then the sauce is a little sriracha, soy sauce, rice vinegar and then what I like to do I mean you could do just that but I always looking for extra fat and protein out here so throw this in there a little peanut butter it's got honey in it so it gives a nice sweetness there you go backcountry stir-fry I'd say it's about 10 degrees colder tonight and I'm a little worried I might get cold. So a little trick you can do is uh, boil hot water or boil water <laughs> and then dump it in some kind of a waterproof bottle like an Nalgene bottle or something and then put that in your sleeping bag and it's like a little personal space heater. So I'm gonna do that and then head to bed. Definitely ready for some sleep. So. I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning. Whew, <laughs> I was out hard. I'm not gonna lie, I slept in some. I think it's like 7.30 now. So, oh, beautiful day it looks like. I'm gonna get some breakfast, pack up camp, and then uh, we'll get moving. So I'm working my way back up towards the top today but I'm going a different canyon up than I came down. So everything's new, everything's unknown, should be fun. Let's see what we can find. Huh, this is pretty interesting. So I just dropped down off of the ledge where I was camping. And when I woke up this morning, I was like, gosh, it sounds like running water down there, which it wasn't running <laughs> when I went to bed. And sure enough, I honestly thought I was kind of losing my mind but sure enough, all that rain in the high country last night must have caused this thing to have a, a little mini flood. Like nothing catastrophic, but flash floods out here are no joke. And just a good little reminder, it can happen quickly. At this point, the flood event seemed nothing more than a novelty. So I pressed on just spooked a huge owl and I see him up there on that rock. Unfortunately the camera is blurry. There he is. He's looking at us. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop? I 
I tried to get closer, but he wasn't having it. He took off. So after I passed that owl, I just like, I don't know, I just had a feeling, you know, and this ledge system looks really no different than a bunch of other ledges I've walked past. But um, I don't know, you know, sometimes you just got to follow that intuition. And so I kind of started scrambling up, left my pack and my camera and all that down there. I just had my phone. So this is on my phone and I kind of got up around this corner and there's a big complex of ruins up here. So here it is, there's a number of structures tucked up under there. <laughs> I don't know, man, I'm not, uh, I'm not one to like read unnecessary meaning into things, but it was kind of ironic that owl was perched right below this. So you've got this low wall here which kind of stretches across the whole area. I would guess that would have been higher at one point in time. Some storage units here. Really cool. Look at all that preserved construction. Pretty cool, look at the roof above me. I've been looking at this from a distance and trying to figure out what is it? It seems, is it fully solid? I thought it might have like an opening somewhere, but it's just like a, a solid pillar, which is kind of interesting. I don't think I've ever just seen like a big pillar like this. This seems like it was the living quarter because it's all blackened from fires. Look here in the back, a little bit still standing, but you can just see See those finger marks where they just like. I'm gonna keep walking this ledge here a little bit and see if there's anything else. Wow, there's just so much mature cryptobiotic soil here. We call it crypto for short. It's basically a living soil crust that's really important to the environment out here. And when we step on it, like it takes literally decades for this stuff to, to grow into maturity. It's kind of like, you know, it's hard. And uh, when we step on it, we crush it and it can, you know, take, like I said, decades for it to regrow. If you don't know what it is and you're inspired to get out and hike the Southwest by my videos, please Google it and learn what it is and how to avoid it. So I continued to walk the ledge and I see there is a huge petroglyph panel right here. Holy cow. Wow. The whole panel is probably 20 feet long. I recognize some of the objects, and then there's a lot I don't. So these are definitely turkey tracks, those right there. 
got this connecting line with many different like swirls coming off of it. And it finishes in this elaborate like necklace of sorts, like a pendant. studying this closer and I have zero idea if there's any validity in this but you know it kind of was like oh it could be like a cloud shape maybe a lightning bolt coming down and all those little dots are symbolizing rain you know some kind of a plea for rain I headed back to my pack, and now the effects of the mini flash flood became apparent. When traveling a canyon with no trail, the typical procedure is to walk in the dry wash. It's relatively easy travel. Although this flood was minor, it was enough to fill the canyon bottom with water and soft, slippery mud. As I pushed up a new canyon and the water increased, my travel slowed to a brutal crawl. So I normally would just walk the wash in a place like this, but there's so much, uh, there's so much water flowing down there that unless I want to hike through the water, I can't. So having to bushwhack through all this sagebrush and rabbit brush and <laughs> tamarisk, it really sucks. I don't know an easy way through here. Yeah, that looks rough. Uh, See what I'm talking about? That whole canyon bottom full of water. The hours ticked by. There were times I barely avoided pools of water of unknown depth. It became clear that unless I pushed myself as hard as I could, I would be spending an unexpected and hungry night in the canyon. Perhaps it was the exhaustion and solitude, but I began to imagine the canyon walls taunting me, reveling in my suffering. It seemed the ghosts of the Ancient Ones were pleased as well, happy their canyons were still protecting them. At one point, I spotted a possible break in the canyon wall. Deciding I wanted out, I risked the climb. Getting halfway up, I didn't like what I saw. I sent the drone up with its final 20% of battery to scout. The results were inconclusive. I didn't have the time or energy to expend on a route that wasn't a definite, so back down I went. It was clear the walls had me trapped, and there was only one way out. Resigned to my fate, I began the canyon walk of shame. We'll keep pushing. All right, guys. So, climbed up from the bottom. I didn't have time to pull the camera out, do all the stuff. I just climbed up to it, um, but wow. 
So up on the wall here, you've got some handprints, a snake, and there's all these red dots like everywhere on this whole overhang. And they aren't natural, I can tell they're painted. What they mean, no idea. These structures have definitely been a bit beat up just by the weather. But you can still imagine what they once were. Oh, holy cow. Look at that, guys. I just, <laughs> I was like, oh, it's just some dots, let's say. Uh, and then out of kind of my periphery, I was like, wait a minute, those are toe, those are feet. Those are like, those are like baby's feet. I mean, look, that's about, that's about like my index finger. It's like, you can see the big toe there, you know, big toe there. Oh, wow. That is crazy. It's like you can just imagine like a, a, a parent, you know, putting that paint on their baby's feet and then just real quick, oh, hey, we're going to plop, plop. Just notice, so look at this big like column of sandstone. It's all one piece. It's probably like almost six feet tall. And it's just wild how, you know, they just planted that in place. So my assumption is these two um, big posts here would have been like the door frame. And I think this is a part of probably the original door. The rest may be broken away. Obviously this stuff is super fragile. Just look, never touch it. And then perhaps the most incredible of it all, an old Kiva with the intact ladder. This is the way you would have originally gone in right in through the top. So the front, you know, has kind of broken down some. It just really got the beams still there, but it kind of works because it gives you just like a sideways look into it. just amazing you know I think really what makes it so unique one you've got like the ladder poles you know the original ladder poles in that Kiva still there but probably the most just like shocking thing was seeing those baby footprints over there hmm really really brings a human dimension to it all you know well this is a site I would normally want to linger at but uh, I still got some miles to cover. I got my wife wondering probably where I'm at, a long drive back home. And so it has been a pleasure, guys. What a trip. For all you who like to worry about me, if I'm posting this video, it means I'm not dead and trapped in this canyon. <laughs> so if you're watching it, you can rest assured I've lived to fight another day. 
Let's continue to remember and preserve pieces of our past. Till next time, guys. See ya.